Hello everyone. My name is Graham Rogers. Uh, I'm a technical advisor for research at the International Rescue Committee and I work in a department called Resettlement, Asylum and Integration or RAI. This department was established relatively recently by essentially combining IRC's US programs uh, with our operations in Europe and this was done with the aim of supporting better integration outcomes for refugees and asylum seekers. This reorganization has shifted the question of integration to the very core of our work and has challenged all of us to consider successful integration as a critical determinant of our organizational impact. On the question of what the IRC is doing well to support integration, I think we're doing several things quite well. First, we're trying to think deeply about what integration means for the refugees and immigrants that we serve, as well as for the communities into which they integrate. At the same time, we're also constantly revisiting the question of how we can measure our performance in this area in ways that are more valid, reliable and meaningful. One of the important lessons that I think we're still learning is that pathways to successful integration are as diverse as the refugee and immigrant communities that we that we serve. When it comes to integration, which is obviously a profoundly subjective experience, there is no one size fits all or magic bullet solution that works for everyone. As a large organization that is interested in scaling solutions for refugees and other displaced populations, maintaining a focus on diversity and resisting a tendency to homogenize the integration process is not always easy. One, another lesson uh, of the past four years or so has been the need to pay much more serious attention to the broader communities that refugees integrate into. I think we're getting better at seeing or imagining integration more as the development and strengthening of relationships that uh, evolve over time, rather, rather than just the sum total of narrowly defined milestones that we measure, uh, usually independently of each other and sometimes quite uh, arbitrarily and in ways that we think are important or perhaps that our donors think are important. This in turn is leading us towards a greater appreciation of the value uh, uh, that our local operational presence represents and the importance of preserving this capacity. In the US, our support for integration is delivered through our network of 25 offices across, uh, located across the country in cities as diverse as Wichita, Kansas and New York City. Each of these represents a unique set of challenges and opportunities that can only be identified and addressed through locally grounded and embedded practice. I'll mention just uh, one example. The IRC has a program called New Roots, which creates opportunities for urban gardening and small scale farming at many sites across our network. Although the program gets offered in uh, much the same way across uh, all of the sites, it gets picked up and transformed in ways that reflect the particularities of the local context. So even with similar program inputs, each site ends up looking very different. In some instances, New Roots offers a critical activity and a safe space for older refugees with limited education and uh, English language abilities, uh, which also incidentally produces some remarkable mental health benefits. And then at other sites, uh, other sites end up focusing more on education or markets. And these markets are in turn organized in very different ways that bring in a range of new actors and may initiate new conversations that explore themes like healthy food options, the localization of food supply chains and environmental responsibility. Regardless of how these conversations play out, the important point is that they connect people in ways that tie them together in, uh, uh, in localized context. So on the one hand, it may seem obvious that these programs will play out differently across different sites, but it is surprising to me that we uh, have tended to pay relatively little attention to this type of heterogeneity, especially when we're considering the question of integration. On the second question of what the IRC uh, is struggling with, uh, one of the things that we're struggling with, which is related to the, the point above, is the challenge of demonstrating the full scope and value and, uh, of the impact of our work. With the rise of, of impact evaluations in the humanitarian sector, 
we have become really good at measuring the things that we think are important about, uh, about integration. Uh, as I think the, the, the example I mentioned above suggests, there's, there is a lot about our work in localized communities that might be unplanned or unacknowledged, but which nonetheless makes a critical contribution to the overall project of integration. I think that we need to push harder to develop uh, the concepts and the language and the methods to understand the imp impact of our work on integration as something that is bigger than just the sum of our measured outcomes. And this is why I, I find an initiative like Refugees in, in, in Towns so important and so valuable. On the third question on how uh, the IRC may be using research or evidence to affect practice, uh, the IRC has been committed to the idea of evidence-based practice for several, several years now, and we have been grappling with the many issues and challenges that this raises. Within the Resettlement, Asylum and Integration team, where I am based, we have uh, very limited opportunities to conduct large-scale impact evaluations, and this limits the extent to which we can ge generate this type of evidence. We struggle with sample size, representativity, the possibility of manipulating interventions to enable control and so on. But perhaps one of the upsides has, uh, of this has been that it, is, it has compelled us to think about evidence in slightly different ways beyond measuring the causal relatedness between an intervention that we think is important and a set of outcomes that we think is important based on the measurement of uh, statistically significant differences. Such studies are obviously still important and will continue to be important for the IRC, but I think we need to expand our approaches and methods in ways that really focus on what's important for our clients and the communities that they, uh, that they live within. So fourthly, on the question of how the IRC has adapted our services to the COVID-19 situation, I think like everyone, where possible, we have uh, uh, sought to keep uh, our services uh, going as far as possible and adapting these to, to the context to enable uh, our work to continue. In some cases, this is in, has involved uh, experimenting with new ways of delivering services either online or over the phone where, where this is possible and appropriate. In situations where services need to be delivered in person, such as supporting newly arrived refugee families, we obviously ensure that protocols and social uh, uh, protocols on social distancing are adhered to. And I think all of us across the organisation really appreciate and recognise the commitment from uh, the staff members who are on our front line uh, in supporting these newly arrived families. As far as our research is concerned. The COVID-19 pandemic has certainly disrupted our ability to collect data, as I think everybody uh, in this conference is, is probably acutely uh, aware of. And again, we have sought to adjust our protocols to collect data online or over the phone uh, just to keep the show on the road as far as possible. Obviously, the pandemic has also raised new questions that we are beginning to develop and explore. One of the, um, one of the obvious ones is uh, you know what has the COVID pandemic, what impact has the COVID pandemic had on refugee integration processes and experiences? So one of the ways that we're trying to do this is to build on a on a three year study that we would uh, just finished collecting data for uh, to really extend the longitudinal dimension of the study uh, and develop new questions so that we can connect the um, uh, the insight that we have into the integration experiences of our clients over the last three years and connect that to the, uh, the, the effect that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on their lives. Uh, so we're basically trying to recruit about 83 participants from the earlier study where we have uh, a, a rich uh, set of panel survey data um, and to continue to explore their experiences uh, going forward. It's a small scale and exploratory initiative, but I think it illustrates how our ongoing investment in research can be adapted 
to help us address important questions uh, as these emerge, such as the global pandemic. Thank you.